Hello and welcome to Sambad. Today we are going to talk to Nilofar Farooq. Nilofar Farooq is a distinguished figure in the world of art, based out of Pakistan. As an art historian, critic, curator, and activist, Nilofar's work has transcended boundaries, expanding the reach of art publication, curation, and public art. Her primary interest lies in issues of decolonization, and as a as a writer and curator, she focuses on that subject heavily. Her focus has been excavation of lost interdependency and connection within the cultural matrix. She has several books to her credit and has been columnist with Dwan and Newsline. The cornerstone of her curator practice underlines the more inclusive. social dialogue through art in public spaces something she is fully committed to she is also ceo of karachi bnr let's welcome nilofar farooq at abir pothis sambad welcome nilofar it's our honor and we are very happy to have you on abir pothis sambad and we are very happy to have you here so thank nilofar you. Uh, thank you I for inviting not, me <laughs> yes i have i have i have not talked about your illustrated career because i thought let's hear it from you instead of me talking about your work so can you talk, uh, tell us about the inception of karachi bnl and how it has started what inspired you to establish establish it as an international contemporary art event from pakistan and talk about your inceptional years and how the whole thing started actually uh, the conversations on having a karachi bnl have been going on for a long time you know maybe over two decades okay. because a lot of our artists were participating in major bnls over the world like the venice bnl documenta and other such important forums so we felt that we should have one and you know bring their work to the country to our city in this case so the whole idea was kind of germinating but it was only in 2017 that we were able to put it together because the time was right i always feel there's a time for everything the time was right we had uh, a lot of violence in our city there was this whole uh, you know kind of violence and divisive politics that had really almost sort of threatened the fabric of our very multicultural city so we felt that art could play a role in healing the city bringing people together and that's how we really began working seriously towards the bnl so in 2017 we had the first edition of the bnl and we've had three since and we kind of look at curatorial strategies in a particular way so they can uh, use public art to draw people to start conversations that's you know more or less the kind of background okay uh so uh it is pretty, like it's it's still young you know it's it's like three three edition old so and you are you are you are geared up for the fourth edition right and you talk yes. about you talk about the social fabric you talk about the violence you talk about uh, uh challenges you face uh, uh Uh, during that time when you started uh, the whole thing your your journey as as a as a founder of karachi bana so this fourth edition how you perceive it how you going to make it happen how you are going to say that it happens uh, as par with other international bnl what are the special things which you are planning to do this year i think every bnl that we have is very anchored in our you know location which is karachi the theme is always very relevant and it also resonates internationally so we choose the kind of theme our themes have been about last one was about art and technology at the art at the intersection of technology which right after covid resonated with people uh, you know people had been using technology extensively during covid and of course there's kind of this whole in you know sort of resurgence to uh, use technology innovatively among artists so we felt that was a good theme this one is going to be more towards uh, you know the foodscape of our region of the world because uh, yes because uh, 
what has happened in the last year or so is that we've had experienced floods, incredible floods that were you know, devastated large tracts of our agrarian spaces. So obviously that has created kind of food security issues. So we are looking at it not just from that lens, but also a wider lens where we are looking at the idea of how colonization impacted the access, the production and commodification of food. That's another area we are going into. And of course, the cultural you know, aspect of food, which we all enjoy, it's embedded yes. in our memory. I think yeah. we, this is so central <laughs> to our being. So yeah. uh, all these things we hope to bring together. Uh, the idea is to start conversations around how food impacts our lives and how the lack of it can also create serious, you know, issues uh, for the human, you know, sort of beings. So I think uh, we have always talked about food in a different way. Mostly it's about, a, it's been a personal thing, but now we will look at political, historical aspects of it. And another thing I'd like to say, we are introducing our first woman curator, Vahida wow. Bano. Yes. Uh, who is um, an incredible young woman, and uh, we are expecting that she will steer the, you know, Biennale forward with her own particular curatorial sensibility. Perfect. And I think food is something uh, we have so much and so many things common when we talk about the food trail of India and Pakistan, and the recipes have been shared largely, and and largely we we are foodie people. I think we've been known in world like that, that, oh, you people come from uh, places of spice and you people eat spicy food. And that's very generalized and very cliche statement to make whenever you go abroad and traveling and if you find Indian or Pakistan, so you people eat such a spicy food. I said, we are happy about it. We love our spicy food. Yeah, so, of course. You know, you know, so yeah, that's, that's very common and that's we keep hearing whenever we travel abroad. Uh, in your view, how does Karanchi Biennale, Biennale reflect the evolving trends and theme of contemporary art. And when you talk about food, uh, I'm very curious how your curator and how your uh, you know project uh, 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 co coordinators are going to translate that idea into art. You know, of course, cooking is art art by itself. So I'm like curious if I can come and visit your Biennale. Now I'm very curious to see that. And if you can throw some light on it, that how your how you have been wise and how your curator, you might have talks around it. And what is the easiest way to express that thought you know, in art? Actually, there, there is no easy way to express it because okay. it's a very diverse and extensive kind of a topic. So basically, yes. we have, you know, kind of divided into certain areas that I just discussed that, you know, we look at the depth of it. We looked at the production of it. We looked at the crisis that we are facing, the climate change crisis that is impacting food production. So we look at all these aspects and we leave it to the artists. The way we work is we create a framework and leave it to the artists. And the ones who have a practice in this area obviously are interested. The ones who, because a lot of projects will be research based because, you know, there is a lot of data that needs to be assimilated and then, you know, kind of, uh, then it, begins to inform the work, the creative process. So that is going to be, and it's all going to be a surprise for all of us really, because okay. that's how our biennals are, that we create the framework. The curator has the prerogative to choose the artists, work with the artists, and then, you know, eventually install the work for the, you know, very large public audience. So uh, this is going to be very interesting, and I'm also looking forward to it. So I hope you can come, or we can virtually show it to you. We, we can have a, we can virtually show it to you. In your opinion, how Karachi Benal has contributed to the growth and development of contemporary art in Pakistan, and also connect Pakistan uh, to the global art forums. How, what role Karachi Benal has played so far, or if any, if, if if you think it has played a a very important role if you feel that if you agree disagree what is your take on it actually that's our mandate a part of our mandate is to allow, create a creative space an innovative space is really the karachi biennale is an incubator of ideas where uh, you know outside the gallery space the artists want to work on a, 
uh, experimental projects. They want to work in the public space, and this is what we offer them it, within the thematic of the, you know, of the Biennale. And uh, when they start experimenting, obviously they work with very cutting edge genres like sound art, uh, performance art, and the, and of course technology, a very kind of, uh, you know, the whole range of technology. And all that brings forth some very exciting synergies. And I think that's what Karachi Biennale does. It creates that, it has, it's a platform where artists come and experiment and with ideas as well as with skills and, uh, you know, tools. So, uh, like, let's say in the last uh, Biennale, we had artists uh, like Solomon Lopez from Spain, who was looking at NFTs in a totally different way. He was a, he's a conceptual artist. And we had sound mm -hmm. artists from the UK who worked with local, um, you know, musicians like the barindo players. The barindo is a very special instrument made out of clay that originated in the Indus Valley civilization during that period. So, you know, th these connections are what I feel are important for our time. That while we are using technology, how does this connect to history, to culture? I think those conversations yes. are important at uh, which the Karachi Biennale has been able to open up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and you, are, you also rightly mentioned that uh, you are also catering to the contemporary needs of our time. And you said food is your subject and food is a central theme of your Karachi Biennale this year. So I think it is next also... Year, next year. Our Biennale is next year. <laughs> of course, uh, next year. So next coming mean I should I should say next coming Vienna, right? So uh, what I, I think so you are trying to uh, complete the loop. You are going back to our roots, our history, and then you are talking about the current scenario, and then you are talking about that how we can translate the whole thought to the next level and cater something to our future generation, and which which remains there for a long time. So I think it's a brilliant thought and. Uh, a commendable work you are doing there and uh, also i wanted to ask that uh, do you include your local craft people local artists because you also talk about the international practices and you international artists who come and work with you or have been part of karachi Bienal. but how about and what about your local artist uh, maybe a local craft person or a local artist who is also trying to find their space in this very very uh, cl uh, crowded cloud you know so do you do you have yeah. this kind of work? actually we 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 encourage artists to experiment and if uh, you know organically they connect to a local craftsperson a local musician or performer it it kind of comes naturally into their work and you know we encourage all kind of uh, connections that are like the last time at the last biennale we had uh, a Chitrali sitar player, which was, you know, uh, the young group of artists, which is called KCR. They kind of experimented and, cre you know, and transformed the music into the robotic form. You know, they created wow. a robotic uh, sitar and it was playing the rhythms of wow. the, uh, you know, folk rhythms. So, you know, all these connections come very organic because I think when you create a space for artists, that is the most exciting thing. When you create yes. a space for them, they kind of think big. They think beyond boundaries that exist. So that is what we try to do at the Karachi Biennale. We create space for them. And, you know, and, and that's how it is because the, uh, the, the contemporary artists in Pakistan are extremely innovative. They just need you know, forums to show their work. Yeah. And they do so all over the world. And of course, at the Karachi Biennale. So uh, if I may ask, uh, what do you think, what kind of challenges or opportunity a contemporary artist in Pakistan would face today? And how does, uh, uh, see, Biennale happen every two years, right? But what are the other options or what are, what are other avenues where uh, they can remain relevant uh, and not only being remembered or uh, uh, asked to, you know, showcase their work 
uh, in such large forum are there any other platforms in pakistan because we are very we are not aware about the contemporary art scenario of pakistan so we would like to peep into that and how you and what are your thoughts how you are able to be an instrumental or incubator in creating that space because you talk about availability that you have to make them uh, make the space available for them so what what do, what are your thoughts on it and how do you uh, 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 try and uh, handhold them in your capacity, in your personal capacity, if I may ask. Actually, there are a few exhibitions, regional exhibitions, like okay. we have an exhibition called Art Fest that brings okay. all the artists for small towns of Sindh uh, to okay. exhibit together, which is very wow. good because it showcases these artists and then the curators from larger biennials or other exhibitions can, you know, take them forward. So we have, uh, you know, the galleries are very active, although the kind of work the galleries exhibit is very different. But again, that's a forum where the works gets exhibited and seen. Uh, and they kind of keep active. We have almost, you know, several openings every week in Karachi. And of course, online, there's a lot of online activity that goes on. And so there are forums, but the Karachi Biennale probably and uh, so is able to produce the largest body of work like we have up to nine uh, venues spread all over Karachi wow. large spaces improvised spaces because we don't have an art museum in Karachi so we have improvised spaces we take over uh, parts of the universities you know schools monumental buildings heritage sites uh, public parks so you see the, the kind of interaction is of a different scale. But there are other forums that kind of operate on a smaller level. And all this kind of connects and, uh, you know, the art scene continues to kind of have that, uh, you know, continues in a very healthy and robust way. Yeah, so that is that is very important that we keep providing that environment to young and emerging artists of our country and it is very important as you rightly said that make a space available for them and they'll express and they'll 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 share their ideas uh, so when you said you invite a lot of international artists this is for my indian artists uh, that how can they be part of Karachi Biennale? It is an ambitious dream, but I, I want to, you know, in any, any, any case, I would like to ask that. And how, so can you share some insight into participation of international contemporary artists in Karachi Biennale and what is the process or it is largely the curator oriented, the curator decides or the body of Karachi Biennale decides. And also how can, how it contributes to cross-cultural exchange and collaborate with uh, uh, arts in outside Pakistan. So, okay. Uh, uh, actually, that's two questions. Let me ask them, answer the first question first. Yes. yes. <laughs> Collaborate, you know, uh, we'll do later. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, we do call, you know, like to have regional artists, very frankly. We had Shiba Chachi in the first Biennale, which is wonderful because, as you know, she's a very uh, exciting artist from India. Yeah. And we've been wanting to have other artists. Actually, before the Biennale, I curated uh, and founded a ceramic triennale uh, in the early 2000s. And we had a good many ceramics from India travel by road with their wow. stuff to Karachi. So, you know, we had good participation because, you know, uh, the recent problems with, you know, coming across the visa issues, movement yeah. of uh, things have created a lot of barriers. But I think what we prefer to do is then maybe like Sheba's contribution was a video. So what we do is we do get art from across the region. We work with, uh, you know, a lot of Sri Lankan artists, Bangladeshi artists. We'd like to work more with uh, Indian artists as well as we work with the artists from Nepal and Iran. So, uh, at, you know, and of course the UAE. So the whole idea is to firstly create uh, this outreach within the region. Because as you earlier said, the conversations are the same, the issues are the same, and we share this tremendous history, yes. uh, you know, of uh, cultural history and political history. And, and, and beyond that, we should have conversations. 
the dialogue is very important and art is maybe best suited for this kind of a, you know neutral yeah. interesting dialogue that looks at the future so uh this is uh, we work with regional artists that is a uh, then we work with artists from all continents we you know we work with latin american artists uh, you know african artists european uh, you know the northern american lot uh, and of course australia so the whole idea is to uh, include artists that are bringing something from their own region and kind of uh, addressing the thematic the issues of the thematic so um in the last one we had artists from japan and from latin america so you know that this whole uh, spectrum tells us what art can do and also of course uh, you know the audiences are excited about their sensibility uh, and whatever they have to offer so uh, the whole idea of the biennale is to very consciously reach out within the region as much as we can um, and then beyond it um and uh, uh, you know cover as much as possible so today uh, we have just host uh, we are yeah, hosting you just had another part. sorry you yeah. the second part of your conversation was yeah, can yeah, you just yeah. repeat it for me can you just repeat the second part of your convers your uh, question yeah so first i asked it was a it was for my indian artist and the other part of question was uh, how karachi biennial has been instrumental uh, uh, to showcase uh, uh, pakistani art scenario to world and world art scenario to pakistan and how the audience i am rephrasing my question how the audience has received it so far and uh, what is your experience for uh, uh, for last three editions what had what how it has been from last three edition because i think you answered the first uh, largely everything in the, your answer so i'm rephrasing it so yeah so you can answer this now yeah actually regarding the audience i feel that we underestimate the common man because you know <laughs> we have this incredible history you know if you if you just look at uh, the work that we have in the you know meher gard museum and the museum at indus valley civilization you know at harappa and at mohenjo daro you know these were very sophisticated civilizations that produced exquisite art and that has been going on so it's very much a part of our dna uh, this this creativity this uh, cultural uh, you know sensitivity so uh when art is exhibited people of course uh, relate to it in different ways uh, very importantly they ask questions and i think uh, a lot of the art is about questions and provoking dialogue so i think uh, we succeeded in that and is getting more because we bring a we focus a lot on youth as well you know school children we have an extensive educational programming that go, goes on for at least 6 7 months before the biennale where we go into school have workshops around the thematic you know because most schools have a very simple curriculum skill based curriculum we talked about conceptual ideas how art is used as a language to talk about issues so all that starts building up and these schools come for a tour of the biennale so uh, the way we connect society and the larger community to art is what has helped us to also build an audience for art contemporary art particularly in karachi mm -hmm. and in pakistan because there's a lot of our you know work is covered by our, the media so it reaches a lot of places in the country and beyond of course uh so you know you talk about dialogue and it is very very important uh, uh, day before yesterday my city has host uh, you know just host uh, a welcome pakistani cricket team and it, they were overwhelmed and it was beautiful messages from pakistani cricketers on twitter so i think it's a good beginning cricket and art i think we both love our country loves and they they are very passionate about and uh, inshallah maybe yes uh, our indian artists will be able to be there and witness uh, the biennial and of course be part of it some day uh, so uh, you know in our country uh, we always uh, we, we always feel that art has been way of life you know uh, the kind of textile we have 
been working with the natural dyes, the embroideries, the food, the, the, the wall paintings of our uh, tribal art and folk art and all. So it has been way of life, you know, uh, for, for generations and ages together. And we have cave paintings, which is 25,000 year old in Bimbetka near uh, uh, Bhopal. So, uh, so that has been part, you mentioned Mohenjo Daro, it has been part of our evolution and our history, strongly rooted, right? Uh, but today in time and age where we are crazily, uh, you know, following the Western world and the de development and globalization has made every city look alike. Wherever you go, you found the same Burger King, same shop, same Zara, same thing. So we are somewhere losing our sense and somewhere we are, we are trying to, you know, uh, imitate and be, to be like them. And we are, our, our struggle uh, uh, is largely how to retain what we used to have and how to, how to convert that idea and thought and translate it into the contemporary relevance, you know. Uh, so uh, let's talk about public art. Uh, so what is, what is, what do you, what is, what are your thoughts on how we make art available besides this big festivals and exhibition is public art, your gardens, your, your, your chorahas, you know. So, and that is where people learn, engage and interact and see art. So what is uh, your take on public art in Pakistan and because we, I am fascinated by truck paintings of Pakistan. I have read so many books around it, and I have, I have, I have seen those beautiful, colorful buses and trucks, which has been a huge thing uh, outside for a person who is not from Pakistan. That how they make their vehicle look like, a, you know, a mobile art show. You know, so can you just talk about, or can you just share your idea about public art in Pakistan and how you would like to see it, or what is there? That should be there, or what is your thought on that? You know? Okay, let, let me start by saying that you mentioned that you would like to come to the Karachi Biennale. I've been wanting to go to the Kochi Biennale for a very, very long time <laughs> since I started actually. Because yes. sometimes I met its founders at the Sharjah Biennale, I met some of their okay. founders. So, okay. you know, but the fact remains that you know, this has not been possible. So uh, basically, the whole idea of public art is a very interesting one. Uh, truck art is very organic. It comes, uh, uh, you know, I've been following it, truck art for almost like 50 years and I've seen it evolve. Wow. Wow. And uh, it's a uh, part of it is about narratives in which, okay. uh, you know, whatever is the current news or what the uh, truck owner or the truck driver feels he kind of brings it into the work like Malala became a big thing they yes. are their followers of Benazir who painted Benazir on the truck in the 60s we had another political leader Ayub Khan who used to be on the trucks so you know okay. it's, uh, it's, it's an expression of the people it's also a lot about pattern and decoration which is very much a part of our you know sensibility so um mm. Uh, uh, skill wise it's also evolved from hand painting to a lot now collage of the colored tapes and the colored um, you know stickers that are available so you know this this whole truck art is about the time it is created in and it's an wow. interesting documentation of that you know of that particular moment in history um, wow. uh, regarding um, public art, you know, Karachi, I can talk from Karachi Biennale's perspective as well. You yes. know, when we have the Biennale in public uh, space, public parks, particularly, like the, La, uh, the Biennale, uh, the second Biennale, which was held in um, Baag Ibn Qasim, which is the largest uh, public park in Karachi, right next to the sea. You know, we obviously had large works over there. You know, uh, you know, there were two huge works that we gifted to the city of Karachi as permanent works. One was by Jabbar Gul, a huge sculpture. The other one was by Hamra Abbas, a very well-known artist. So basically, so they remain there, not only as a memory of the Biennale, but uh, people can continue to see them and be exposed to them. You know, in, in fact, after that, we installed a public art at the Karachi Zoo. This was wow. a very exciting work by an Iranian UK artist, Mohsen Akiani. You know, he did this um, huge birds from recycled metal. 
with the help of welders in Karachi. Huge birds, uh, and uh, one of the birds had been has been installed at the Karachi Zoo because that was also the venue of his exhibition at the, during the Biennale. He, this was the place he exhibited his big installation. Uh, and you know, next week we are going to install another of his birds, which is a huge a peacock, at uh, another public space. So the Karachi Biennale sometimes requests artists to leave their works behind and then gifts them to the city of Karachi. So that's our contribution because we feel if, uh, you know, after two years, the gap is tremendous. So these works at least are there. People get to see them. Uh, regarding uh, the history of public art in, um, you know, in my city and the country, it's been a kind of, a, you know, it's been up and down. You have these very official monuments. Then sometimes we have small interventions, like we have this beautiful fish by a very famous artist, Zahuru Laklaq, at the Maritime Museum, and similar smaller works. But wow. some of them, are, I think the trend is changing. People are not, don't want those kind of very official looking uh, monuments. They want something more creative, something which they can relate to. So I think things are changing, really. Uh, so, uh, you know, that that's the situation at the moment. Okay. So if I, if I may ask, what is the most significant art movement uh, post-independence Pakistan has witnessed? And uh, what do you think, or maybe most significant artist name, if you can mention, forget the movement, let's say artist or artist work or their contribution uh, in the field of Pakistani art scenario. I think um, we must talk about it because uh, it is coming from you. It's going to be very, very important for us to hear this. This is a big responsibility, Ruby, <laughs> for me to be able to choose one artist out of the hundreds and thousands. But I can talk about the influential artists. Let, let's yeah. talk about people who have uh, had an impact or have had something to kind of, uh, let's say, uh, their art had that kind of gravitas or had that power. Uh, I may say global appeal or global, uh, global you connect. See, you see, the global while the global connect is concerned, to me, uh, that's another story. We'll talk about okay. that later. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, you know, I think Sadha Khan has been a pivot. Just like you have M.F. Hussain and you have others, you know. Um, he has been a pivotal kind of artist who has influenced people uh, because he was very public in his uh, art production. You know, he just sat where he was doing public art. He created a lot of public art, murals, ceilings. And his body of work is around people's issues. People could relate to the angst. They could relate to those tortured figures. Now, they could also, you know, find some kind of connection with their lives. Uh, so that I feel he is by far among the first generation, a very influential figure. You also have another influential figure who, again, uh, because of his uh, place in academia, art academia was also influential. That was Shakir Ali. Shakir okay. Ali and uh, Shakir Ali being at NCA was able to influence a whole generation of artists. And one of his students was Zahuru Laklaq. To me, Zahuru Laklaq is also a very important artist, a cerebral artist. Uh, you know, he brought a lot of the conceptual thinking in art. And he then created, I mean, he's at the cusp of modernism and postmodernism, Zahuru Laklaq. So he was able to push that in a particular direction. And he's an important artist. And he then was the teacher of people like, uh, you know, other important artists like Imran Qureshi and Rashid Rana. Oh, these okay. are also, these are, this is a whole connection. Like it was Zahuru Laklaab who was looking at miniature and interpreting it with a modern sensibility a more contemporary sensibility. So nobody before that had looked at Mughal miniature or miniature painting, regional as well, and made that connection. 
So he was important for that. And he, you know, started this uh, whole process at NCA where they started looking at miniature in a different way. And, uh, you know, miniature painting and it's now produced a whole generation or rather, you know, almost the second generation is now coming in of artists who do contemporary miniature painting. Then there's another artist that I find, and you know, I've been researching on her, so you know, I guess yeah. there's a connection there. Uh, because my, my last book is on her, is Meher of Rose. Meher of okay. Rose is a very interesting woman, who a, a woman artist. Of course, there are many other important women artists, but her work is about decolonization. You know, wow. we talked about this global. Um, Thing, you know, what's your global outreach? How many people see your work or is exhibited at major forums? Meher of Rose is one of those people who his work is quite, uh, you know, kind of uh, about her culture. It's about the forces, her experiences, you know, like Nalani Malani's yeah. work. You know, yeah. they, they, like till recently, I remember seeing her work at Documenta and other places. Till recently, she was working ab about her own experiences. Meher's work is very similar. She talks about her own experiences and she talks about this whole the partition experience, post-partition, because she grew up in Lucknow. She came to Pakistan only in 1970. So there is this interesting thing where she's grown up in India, comes to Pakistan and develops her practice here kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, like borrowing from both her experiences. So, uh, and her work is very much about the language. It's about uh, our patterns and motifs and our symbols. So I find that she has a lot to offer. Maybe today people don't have this kind of understanding of her importance, but definitely with time. Uh, there will be greater impact. So, you know, artists are about instant impact and, you know, historical impact. So I'm looking at both, really. You know, uh, wow. being someone who's you know, studies art history and kind of, uh, uh, of you know, looks at the future as well. And then, of course, we have a, a good many interesting contemporary artists who are you know, creating uh, dialogue, connections. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, if you can highlight on any recent development of emerging art, because you talk about contemporary and emerging artists of Pakistan, uh, which are maybe emerging trends where Pakistani artists are more, dry, you know, driven towards certain medium, certain style, uh, certain Western influence, or they are still looking back and try to stuck to their root or they want to they are more experimental than before so what is your uh, experience there and uh, how do you see the contemporary trends in pakistani artists and pakistani art you know the way contemporary art is developing not only in pakistan but many parts of the world yes. is that uh, you know you take conceptually you connect to your own roots and yet you use a language that is very contemporary. And, and of course, mediums like technology and you know others. Now, uh, one of the uh, genres that has really caught on in Pakistan is performance art. A lot of young people are you know, uh, creating a practice that is informed by performative art. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, they continue doing other things but performance art is very much a part of that practice. Um, there are also uh, artists that are looking at sound art. This is a more recent phenomena, but they're slowly breaking into that space. Technology after the last Biennale, I feel has this generated a lot of interest in technology because they could interact with artists from all over the world. Uh, and uh, they saw this you know, experimental, uh, kind of connections between the, the local dialogue as well as you know international dialogue so uh, i feel uh, the space that i see art developing in is a kind of they're anchored 
to their own experience, their own reality, and yet they're using a language that is universal. This is how that, you know, that thing is taking place, the development is taking place. Yeah, and I think decolon the whole ideas of decolonization, I think, have also opened up. And I like to think of the Biennale and forums like this in countries that, uh, you know, were previously colonies are pushing that connection, you know, like owning our own reality, our own history, uh, you know, kind of uh, doing away with erasure or questioning that erasure. Yes. And I think uh, we are going to be young countries in next uh, few years because like my generation before me has seen the, uh, you know, scars of uh, uh, partition, but we, I have, I've been born in an independent country, same with the other young uh, Pakistanis who were born after independence in that. And for them, the reality is we are born in an independent country and it is very important for them to, you know, have this exposure of decolonization and the, the very, very sensitive issues you just mentioned. But here I'm going to talk about something very fascinating that you have done recently. Uh, uh, where you have completed a piece on Ustad Allah for an upcoming dark publication. And can you share some insight from that research of yours? And how do you see his work resonate the context of contemporary art in our both countries, you know? So if you can share something from that research. You know, the history of Ustad Allah is a very personal one. I mean, it's interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, when, when I saw... Uh, you see, Ustad Allah Baksh and Chuhtai were contemporaries. Of and, course. you know, all throughout when I was an art student, uh, Chuhtai was this big figure and Allah Baksh was there, but he was kind of a shadowy figure. He was kind of fairly marginalized. Till, uh, you know, much later after I left art school, I saw his uh, uh, rock paintings. You know, he did mm -hmm. these very interesting uh, you know, kind of uh, paintings which were focused only on rock formations. Yeah. And I was really intrigued by it because I felt that this is a very modern sensibility. This is like almost like abstract paintings. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that stayed with me throughout. And I kept going back. And, you know, in the National Museum, we have this wonderful connection of Ustad Allah Bakhsh's landscapes. So I used to look at them and be fascinated. But, you know, I'd seen better landscapes all over the world. Yeah. So it, it was not a big deal. But those rock paintings were extremely different. So when uh, someone approached me from DAG, uh, I think it was one of the editors, that uh, if I would be interested to do this piece, and it was on a specific painting they wanted me to highlight. I can't give you too many details because I suppose the art needs to be, you know, published. Yes, but I'm giving you, yes. you know, some some ideas. So, um, uh, basically, through my research, um, Ustad Balabakshi is an enigmatic figure because he did not date his work. So only stylistically can we see the chronology of his work, uh, and he also goes back and for, uh, forth stylistically also. But anyway, okay. whatever research was available, I, you know, carried on with it and did that. And I realized something very interesting. That he was almost like a contemporary artist. His sensibility was very contemporary. You know, he took from his time. He did not get stuck in one space, one style. He was constantly borrowing. Like he uh, was working in Calcutta during the 1920s um, and 30s. He was in Calcutta and he worked for Aga Hashar, the great theater company. And I think at that time, obviously he was exposed a lot to theater. Later he went to Bombay and he worked with uh, movies. And there was a lot of that exposure. So when you look at his groups in his paintings, you see someone who's very conscious of how to uh, choreograph groups, spatial relationships. You know, he was taken from there and then he was obviously exposed to the new Bengal school wash painting. Although he was an oil painter, but he experimented with that kind of sensibility, the sensitive surfaces. Then he was also looking as Raja Ravi Verma. 
and he was looking at the textiles, the rich, lush textiles that uh, Raja Ravi Verma did. So he was like looking at all the, let us say, contempt uh, time, you know, work of his time, contemporary to his time, and he was assimilating it in his practice. That is very much what a contemporary artist does. And he was not uh, worried about a religious identity or a regional identity. It is very much later that he, in his career, and I think most of his is post uh, independence or close to that time, that he, when he started staying in Lahore, that he began looking at Punjabi folklore and Punjabi rural scenes. But prior to that, he was very open. He did a lot of Krishna paintings. In fact, he became known as the Krishna painter. So, uh, and he was at the fort of Patiala, fort of Patiala and other places. So the whole idea that he is truly an artist that is looking at the entire Indian cultural, uh, you know, sort of scene, I found that very fascinating. And, uh, you know, the more history you read around him of his time, it makes you feel that here is this very kind of adventurous, courageous kind of a spirit. Wow. In our conversation, uh, you mentioned Nalini Malani. Do you have any other favorites uh, when it comes to Indian artists which you would like to see and visit their studio and sit over a cup of coffee and chat about their work? And is there any wish list where you can actually meet and see, be in their studios and talk with them? Yeah, yeah. Any, any Indian artists? I, I, I'd like to meet Subodh Gupta. I've seen oh, his wow. work all over the world. I've seen his work and Jogan Chaudhary as wow. work I would like to see because, you know, these are artists. I've seen their work all over the world in other biennials. Um, I I'll go to a lot of biennials, especially the Venice Biennale and Documenta. Of and I feel that I see and even Nalini's work. I would love to have a cup of coffee with her. Who knows? <laughs> it may be in some other country. <laughs> Yes. No, and no, then, I think, uh, yes. Uh, you yeah, you and, will be surely yeah. visiting them. Yeah. And any, and other, Arpana, any other artists? Yeah, Arpana Kaur, I'd like to see her work. I mean, okay. there, there are a lot of MF Hussain I've met because he used to come to Pakistan quite a bit. I met some Indian artists abroad as well. Uh, when I go to the Sharjah Biennale, I meet them and, you know, in other places. And of course, uh, you know, but the fact is that there are a lot of them that I'd like to meet and also host <laughs> them in Pakistan. You see, the thing is that, you know, what we find fascinating, we must also bring back and share with people. So, I mean, I would love to host uh, them here in uh, Karachi with the exhibition or without them i'm sure there are lots to offer <laughs> of course i hope people who are uh, responsible for that listening to this or maybe I mean, we made them listen to this conversation and you rightly said in your uh, in your, our initial note that you know dialogues are very important we need to converse we need to talk we need to have exchange of ideas and that is how the how that is how homo sapiens have survived and dinosaur died because they could mm -hmm. say that, you know. So that we have to go back to our, uh, 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 you know, I would say the primal uh, self and be that where we are only interested in surviving as human and, mm -hmm. and humanity, uh, if I if I may so, yeah. if I may say that. Yeah. So uh, you know what, uh, Milofa, the, the last question which I would like to ask, but before that. I have gone through your illustrated huge profile. You know, you have done so much work and you have written so many books and you've been founder and, uh, you know, person behind Karachi Biana. And what are your future plans? What kind of books you'd like to read, uh, write? Or what kind of inspira aspiration you have for Karachi Biana? What you would like to see in contemporary art scene in Pakistan? And how do you see it continuing to shape and influence local and international artscape? And how what, what role Pakistani artists you think would play in future art scenario uh, when we talk about Southern Asian art diaspora? Uh, I think uh, I'd like to go back to the point where we started this interview, that art is the best way, form of dialogue. Because it's about, uh, you know, it touches us, uh, you know, in different ways. It touches our soul, it touches our emotions and intellect. 
so i feel that art is probably uh, if we can share at multiple levels as i just said if we can have artists like you know when mf hussain used to come to pakistan it used to be fantastic in karachi i think we had him quite a few times in the 90s and later uh, you know it used to be a wonderful time to talk to him and talk about a lot of issues uh, shared history um and uh, now what i would like to do is you know i'm also um, an art historian uh, or i would say a student of art history <laughs> and uh, that uh, you know we have a lot in common i have been reading books from your historians like geeta kapoor and also i am a great fan of the writings of gayatri spivak and many others uh, you know who have written and, and of course there are a lot of other contemporary um, historians that i read and uh, you know, these are the people i like to see in pakistan presenting papers having dialogues with pakistani historians because i think it's very vital that we continue this exchange and maybe through your uh, you know poti we can do that uh another thing i feel is decolonization the way i feel you know since the independence one of the agendas of independence was decolonization was to you know reclaim history to reclaim a lot of our cultural identity that was lost and this is shared between you know it it has no boundaries culture has no real boundaries we all were a you know part of the same area sharing a lot of its evolution so i'd like to see uh, us uh, this project of decolonization to be taken in a in a in a sort of further through books through dialogue and also it should be a part of institutions at the moment what's happening is that there's a lot of dialogue among people but museums and uh, other academic institutions are not enforcing it are not taking it seriously are not there's not enough research so i would like to see it mainstreamed in art education very frankly not as a fringe subject but as a central driving force uh, and my own book my, i've been researching on the art history of karachi and i would like to you know obviously um, you know complete that project uh, also in terms of uh, my own writings and my work i hope i can you know spend some time consolidating them as well i've been written countless columns and presented many papers everywhere so i feel this whole idea of being very being able to tell our story this is the story of our region is very very important without any mediators that is why if we are able to dialogue within ourselves it will be it will strengthen our position uh, but so we are we don't need to be looking at other countries to mediate to be able to show us direction we we have our own direction which is uh, which is how you know we, we are moving in that direction because we have you know anchored in our own reality so i think uh, abir pothi has made a humble beginning by get, reach out to you and request you to talk to us and you very graciously gave your time to us and shared some wonderful wonderful experience which you had throughout and also talked about the contemporary Kara uh, pakistani art scene you also talk about karachi bienal and and what you would like to see and what you are you know the moment the most important word you use here is decolonization reclaim what we lost reclaim and take an ownership of it and be be one with what we wear you know instead instead of just uh, I, i should not be saying this in interview like headless chicken and just trying to imitate the what western world is offering us yeah. you know i i used to go to yeah so when, earlier when i used to go to ajmer ajmer has own uh, uh, you know pattern of houses and roof and jaisalmer is own pattern of uh, houses and roof and the color of blue is very famous the blue ajmerian houses as uh, jaisalmerian houses now you go in the central central road of uh, this city you find uh, you know burger king you find this food chains you find the pizza huts and so you i think it is like any other road of ahmedabad you know 
I'm not against development. I'm not against uh, against the globalization. We have to become eventually one to survive. Corona made us look into ourselves and within ourselves and tell us that you are human being and you are so perishable. And you you cannot fight over borders and your history. You have to work towards betterment of humanity, humanity and for human beings. So I think that was one big jolt we we faced as a as one uh, big global village and and. That has bring somehow brought us together and you know put a, put us on a, on a very very democratic line that okay you people are equal and, and people will suffer from sickness irrespective from where they are. So I think that has happened after COVID. People have started looking everybody as one, and I think it's a good good. It was it was a very very grave crisis we went through, but it has also helped our conscience to see beyond our selfish motive and our greedy small side small sightedness you know uh, so it was wonderful talking to you nilofer and i think it's a humble beginning I, I i wish and i pray to god that we we have this kind of dialogue and interaction of idea and we are in a juxta position where people like you will have to come forward and people like us will have to request people like you to come forward and talk to us and you know when we started amir pothi it's a digital art newspaper and we consciously decided to remain away from politics remain away from any kind of glamorous film or you know those kind of uh, which 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 will take our our focus from art so we are wanting to remain true to our course we want to remain true to our objective and that's that's why we reach out to you and said we must have this interaction we must know what is happening beyond our borders and we have to find the loop which connects each other you know so thank you so much for giving your time nilofer and it was wonderful talking to you and i think we must do this more often and once the karachi bernal is on and it's happening we try and reach out to you again and let talk about talk to your curator as well and uh, absolutely right that would be nice so, Yeah. Try to be a peeping tom of what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening there? Yeah. <laughs> what is would be there? wonderful. But thank yeah. you for inviting me. I think it's a tremendous step. We should continue. Maybe uh, develop a seminar series or something, because you have access to all the Indian artists and this thing, and we have access to the local ones here. Start a uh, whole series of seminars. Maybe you know, just uh, taking up subjects and you know. Talking about yes. them, I I think this would definitely go in a positive way, and thank you for inviting me again. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Okay.